Hey man, don't do it. Yeah, that's right, y'all.
also, we don't even have to do that. We can get it out. Contract? Go there, like, this is what you're gonna do. You just... What the hell? What the fuck was that? What the hell? Oh my god, what the hell was that? Dude, my laptop is like completely covered. <laughs> the order is coming? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Sean Hodgins and welcome back to my finally share with you a project I've been working on for Mark Rober over the last couple of months. It's called the Karma Glitter Bomb. It's pretty cool. It was pretty challenging and hopefully everything worked out. I don't know at this point of me filming. Anyways, everyone, I'll show you how it works and what we had to go through. Let's go. So a few months ago, I started talking to Mark Rober. So I guess the story goes is he had a package stolen from his front porch. Okay, I'm just gonna stop you there. If you haven't yet, I highly recommend you go and watch Mark's video first. It's super entertaining, it's a lot of fun, and it shows you how the device was used. And then after you watch that and you still wanna learn more about it and what we had to go through to build the device, then you can come back here and watch it. Anyways, back to it. and he was able to capture the person on his Nest video camera stealing that package. He came up with this idea to get revenge on the package thief by building a glitter device that shoots glitter, like a whole cup of glitter that will go everywhere, and also be able to capture it on camera. Now, this is actually a really challenging and interesting engineering problem. You have a lot of factors. You have to be able to capture video remotely, retrieve that footage, that's the hard part, trigger the glitter at the right time, and the footage has to be good enough to use in a video or else it's useless, because if you don't have good footage, what's the point in taking it? We went through a few different designs and initially we started out with trying to do like a fan and a blower to blow the cup, but it didn't have a good enough initial velocity to really do anything huge, so it would kind of slowly come out, and it wasn't that great. And I tried some really powerful fans, but they just, they took a while to spin up. I used a server fan, it was kind of scary. Finally came up with the idea to kind of make like a blender cup, like the way a blender will throw food out of the thing when you spin it up. Same idea as this cup, it'll just use the forces from spinning to throw the glitter all over the room. And it actually worked perfectly, like right on the first design, which is incredible. Testing in three, two, one.
So minus some of my better judgment today, I'm going to be setting up and setting off the super glitter bomb behind me in my own backyard. I need to see how much of a spread it's actually going to make and I'm actually going to see how hard it hits me. It's really windy, I'm hoping glitter doesn't go everywhere but I think it'll stay on the brick and I'll just sweep it up after. So I'm going to set it up right now and we'll see how it goes. Two, one. So the problem with this glitter is it looks like it's white, but it is very much like see-through, kind of clear. So once we had that design, we could work around figuring out how the cameras were going to work. Now we knew that the best shot was going to be a wide angle, but there were a number of different ways you could do this. I could have used a, a Raspberry Pi. Um, with a bunch of different camera modules, but it would have been hard to capture high definition on four cameras all at the same time with, with the Pi because they're not that powerful. The idea of to use four Android phones came up, but then again, how do you trigger the phones to start recording? So first find an Android phone that had a wide angle lens, so that narrowed down the selection quite a bit and I settled on the LG G5 which has like 135 degrees of field of view or something like that. So I originally had cameras that were in here and then one lower so that they would just, they just fit. But that made it really quite difficult to align everything and it also made the cameras just face outward so that you didn't really have that much height when it came to getting the view. So all these things were being tested because you needed that perfect shot. That was the first design, which I have here. So these, these are 3D printed at Shapeways. Yeah, so the cameras went in horizontally, and there was one lower and one higher, and it just wasn't working out. The angle was not good enough, it was probably going to miss the reaction, and uh, there's just a higher probability that the shot wasn't going to be good. So then we changed the design to portrait mode, which makes sense. Since you've got four cameras, and they're all recording at 1080p, you can use those four cameras as much larger footage, so if you want high quality footage. So you're still getting 1080p, but it's just portrait mode, the way everyone hates it when you film that way, but if you can stack them together, you get a 360 view of the room, basically. So now we've got them angled back 10 degrees. We're making better use of the space internally because we weren't using that space between the cup and the cameras because they were all against the wall. So now this is the final design that we came up with, which is a, a two-frame design. You have the upper part, which has the cup in it, and uh, the lower part which supports the cameras and keeps them all locked in. So the cameras just slide into this slot here and then you secure them at the top with another 3D printed part that just screws in and everything is super secure. It does not move at all and like there's no worry about these cameras moving. So that leaves the electronics and how these cameras are going to be triggered because that was the final problem that had to be solved because you have these four cameras they have to be triggered when a switch is turned on you need to kind of record at certain times and sure you can program the androids to do things when they feel acceler accelerometer movements things like that but we didn't want them to lose power really quick so they had to be in like a low power state the magic here that allows it to trigger the cameras is that inside actually on right now. Inside we have these four little circuit boards that are connected to the camera's headphone jack and we all know that when you've got headphones that have a microphone and buttons on them you can control the volume, you can uh, start and stop your music, but what people don't know is that you can actually program that button to basically do anything you want. So if you run a program like a sequence of events that are all based on this button push. On the Arduino I have two pins that are basically uh, I set them as inputs so that they're just floating and to trigger the button I have to set them both low at the same time 
and that will start the camera recording. And a lot of the complications came from the fact that I don't have a lot of control over the Android phones. I have 100% control of the Arduino, but what I can do with the Androids, I'm left with what other people have created. So the Automate app, any limitations there, have to find workarounds. So things like you can't just upload the file and then immediately start recording another file unless you open the Google Photos app and then put it in the background. So the process that happens on here actually ends up being really complicated, but it's all based on just a single one button push. And there's a process to test this whole thing. So I went through that process and this is how it's done. Step one, hook up the wires, get the phone's programs all running, get it powered, and get it fully assembled. Step two, fill the cup with glitter. This is the dangerous part. Step three, place the cover on. The device is now armed. Step four, put the device on the front porch so that someone wants to steal it. Step five, no one steals it, so I take it inside and I charge it for a little bit. This is just to test out this procedure. Step six, I disconnect the charger, place it back outside, it's ready to go. Step seven, I steal it from my own porch, I pretend I'm a thief, stealing packages, talk to the box a little bit, see how the audio comes out, put it in my car. Step eight, drive it to somewhere indiscreet. Step nine, proceed to open it, glitter going everywhere, and hopefully seeing if the footage shows up. That's it, it's a simple procedure, but it needs to work perfectly the first time.